May I, Rabbi? The Senate will come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? Senators Baisley, Bridges, Bridges, the 
it's used. Buckner. Present. Coleman. Woo! Cutter. Cutter. Calling Cutter. Senator Cutter. Cutter. Here, here. Danielson. Exum. Fields. Gardner. Janal. Gonzalez. Hansen. Henriksen. Hakez Lewis. Kirkmeyer. Coker. Excused. Liston. Lundeen. Marchman. Moreno. Mullica. Pelton B. Pelton R. Priola. Rich. Roberts. Rodriguez. Simpson. Smallwood. Sullivan. Van Winkle. Will. Winter, Zenzinger, Bridges, Mr. President. Here. The morning roll call is 34 present, zero absent, one excused. We do have a quorum. Will the good senator from Avon please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Approval of the journal, Senator Rodriguez. <laughs> oh, sorry, Senator Liston. Mr. President, uh, may, may I have a moment of personal privilege, please? Denied. <laughs> Pretty please. Granted. Okay. Uh, members, when, uh, there are some people that have asked me about limericks, and maybe you've forgotten how they work, but uh, just to, to refresh people's minds, it's the first and second and fifth uh, lines that rhyme and lines three and four rhyme. So if, if you think that my, my, uh, uh, my rhyming is off, it really is not. So, uh, other, things are off. other things are off. But uh, first of all, uh, Mr. President, I move that the Senate Journal of Wednesday, March the 8th, 2023, be approved, but first, the reading of the journal is a long-standing tradition. It requires much skill and could be my volition. You don't have to be anatomical, but it certainly helps if you can be comical. But you do have to be on time for each edition. And so, and uh, be approved by uh, and corrected by the secretary. And that's all. So that's your limerick for the day. More to come tomorrow. <laughs> we cannot wait. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no? No. The ayes have it. That motion is adopted. Committee reports. 
March 8, 2023, the Committee on Health and Human Services, after consideration on the merits, the committee recommends the following. Senate Bill 151 be referred favorably to the Committee on Appropriations. March 8, 2023, Mr. President, the Committee on Transportation and Energy has had under consideration and has had a hearing on the following appointments and recommends that the appointments be placed on the consent calendar confirmed. Member of the Clean Fleet Enterprise for terms expiring September 28, 2024, Jose Guardiola of Commerce City, Colorado, to serve as an individual from a disproportionately impacted community occasion by the resignation of Carlos Gonzalez of Colorado Springs, Colorado appointed. Third. Third reading of bills. Consent calendar. Will the clerk please read all of the bills on the third reading of bills consent calendar? Senate Bill 24, Senator Kirkmeyer, Representative Pugliese, concerning permitting the ch a challenge to the constitutionality of a court order in a contempt proceeding. House Bill 1125, Representatives Lukens and Winter T, Senators Simpson and Marchman, concerning the modernization of the process to challenge groundwater well owner contact information. House Bill 1058, Representative Dixon, Senator Buckner, concerning a change to the definition of child-occupied facility as it relates to lead-based paint abatement. Majority Leader Moreno. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the passage of all the bills on the consent calendar, which consists of Senate Bill 24, House Bill 1125, and House Bill 1058. Is there any discussion on any of the bills? Seeing none, the motion is the passage of all the bills on third reading of bills consent calendar. Are there any no votes? Minority Leader Lundin. Thank you, Mr. President. I request to be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1058. Minority Leader Lundin will be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1058. Senator Van Winkle. Thank you, Mr. President. I request to also be listed as a no vote on House Bill 1058. Senator Van Winkle will be listed as a no vote on House Bill 1058. Senator Baisley. Thank you, Mr. President. I request to be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1058. Senator Baisley will be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1058. Senator Pelton. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd also like to be recorded as a no vote on 1058. Senator Pelton R. will be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1058. Senator Rich. Thank you, Mr. President. I request to be recorded as a no vote on this bill. Senator Rich will be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1058. Senator Pelton. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to also be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 23-1058. Senator Pelton B will be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1058. Senator Gardner. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, not, not to be outdone in <coughs> negativity, uh, I request that I be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 23-1058. Senator Gardner will be recorded as a no vote on House Bill 1058. With a vote of 34 ayes, zero noes, zero absent, one excuse, Senate Bill 24 is passed. Co-sponsors. Senators Roberts. Minority Leader Lundin, Cutter, Rodriguez, Priola, Winter, Gardner, Bridges, Liston, Pelton B. Pelton R. With a vote of 34 ayes, zero noes, zero absent, one excused, House Bill 1125 is passed. Co-sponsors. Senators Roberts. Majority Leader Moreno, Jaquez Lewis, Buckner, Priola, Fields, Rodriguez, Janal, Cutter,
with a vote of 27 ayes, 7 no, 0 abs, and 1 excuse, House Bill 1058 is passed. Co-sponsors, Senators Gonzalez, Marchman, Jaquez Lewis, Rodriguez, Priola, Sullivan, Winter, Cutter, Exum, Coleman, Fields, Please add the president. Third reading of bills, final passage. Will the clerk please read the title to House Bill 1004. House Bill 1004, Representative Velasco, Senator Gonzalez, concerning requirements regarding the language used in certain insurance documents. Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, it is an honor and a joy to move House Bill 1004 on third reading and final passage. I ask for an aye vote. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the motion is the passage of House Bill 1004. Are there any no votes? Senators Rich, Van Winkle, Will, Baisley, Gardner, Minority Leader Lundin, Kirkmeyer, Smallwood, Liston, Simpson. <laughs> With a uh, Pelton R. With a vote of 23 ayes, 11 no, 0 absent, 1 excused, House Bill 1004 is passed. Co-sponsors, Senators Rodriguez, Henriksen, Majority Leader Moreno, Exum, Hansen, Jaquez Lewis, Marchman, Fields, Sullivan, Danielson, Priola, Cutter, Buckner, Winter, Zenzinger, please add the president. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 60. Senate Bill 60, Senators Rodriguez and Bailey, Representatives Doherty and Lindsay concerning consumer protections in event ticket, ticket sales. Senator Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. President. I move Senate Bill 60 on third reading and final passage. Ask for an I vote. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, the motion is the passage of Senate Bill 60. Are there any no votes? Senators Van Winkle, Will, Simpson, Pelton R, Pelton B, Gardner, Sullivan. With a vote of 27 ayes, 7 no, 0 absent, 1 excuse, Senate Bill 60 is passed. Co-sponsors. No one really wants to touch that one. <clears throat> Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 144. Senate Bill 144, Senator Janal, Representative Mabry, concerning prescription drugs for the treatment of chronic pain. Senator Janal. Thank you. Mr. President, I move Senate Bill 144 as amended on third reading and final passage. Are there, oh, is there any further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, the motion is the passage of Senate Bill 144. Are there any no votes? Senators Hawkes Lewis. Fields, Van Winkle, Buckner, <clears throat> with a vote of 30 ayes, 4 noes, 0 absent, 1 excuse, Senate Bill 144 is passed. <laughs> Co-sponsors. Senators Smallwood.
Majority Leader Moreno. Thank you, Mr. President. Having voted on the prevailing side, I move for the immediate reconsideration of Senate Bill 144. The motion is for the reconsideration of Senate Bill 144. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The motion is adopted and reconsideration is granted. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 144. Senate Bill 144, Senator Janal, Representative Mabry, concerning prescription drugs for the treatment of chronic pain. Senator Janal. Thank you, Mr. President. Let's try this again. I move Senate Bill 144 as amended on third reading and final passage. 144. Man, this, this is, this is Ask painful. Ask for an I vote. This is painful, Senator Janal. <laughs> is there any discussion? See none. The motion is the passage of Senate Bill 144. Are there any no votes? Senators, Hawkes Lewis. No votes. Okay. With a vote of 33 ayes, one no, zero absent, one excuse, Senate Bill 144 is passed. Co-sponsors. Senators Fields. Buckner, Zenzinger, Kirkmeyer, Smallwood, Liston, Minority Leader Lundeen, Gardner, Pelton R, Will, Van Winkle, Rich. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 83. I got four. Senate Bill 83, Senators Winter four. F. and Simpson, Representatives Winter T. and Michelson Janae, concerning an expansion of a physician assistant's ability to practice and in connection therewith changing the relationship between a physician assistant and a physician or podiatrist from supervision to collaboration. Senator Simpson. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I move Senate Bill 83 on third reading and final passage and ask for an aye vote. Is there any discussion? Senator Mullica. Thank you, Mr. President. And, and before I get started, I, I want to thank the, the two sponsors for the work that they put in and the good faith effort that they, they really came to, to finding a solution to some of the issues. Uh, that were brought up. And we obviously had a, a robust debate on Tuesday uh, evening. Um, you know, I think before I get into the specifics of where I'm at on this bill and, and you know, what I was hoping to see change, I think... Members, I think, yeah. members, we are on third reading, so please keep it down in the chamber. Please proceed, Senator Mullica. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, members, I was elected by... Senate District 25, 24, by those constituents. Um, and I'm down here to represent them. I'm down here to represent my patients. And we were having a respectful, robust debate on Tuesday, and, and obviously some differences of opinion, but I believe that it was respectful, and I believe both entities were really trying to work to find those solutions. And, and Mr. President, I, you know, it, it, it was concerning to me to see some of the decorum that was in the room. I think some of the words, and, and I'll repeat them here at the well, that, uh, that I was displaying bad behavior. And, uh, and this was dim on dim, you know, violence. And, and hearing that as I'm speaking in the well from members, uh, you know, I, I expect better. I think that, that this institution deserves better. Um, I believe that we're supposed to we're not always supposed to agree, and we're not always supposed to have the same opinions, and, and we're supposed to have these debates. And, and I want to be clear that, um, that I represent my district, and I, and I represent those who put me down here. I don't represent uh, necessarily just a party or, 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 or anything like that. And so this, this concept that this is, you know, Democrat, Democrat on Democrat, debates that that's not all right or, or that that's displaying bad behavior I think is, is the wrong thing and I think that we need to be careful when we have members debating in the well for us to, to be saying inappropriate things as members sit at their, at their desks. I think that, that this institution deserves better. Um, 
Members, I think that, that where I'm coming from on this bill is that we know physicians bring a level of expertise. We know that the education uh, that they have and the, and, and the training that they have uh, is extensive. And um, what I advocate for is that physician-led care. Um, I work with PAs on a daily basis, and, 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 and they are amazing, and the care that they provide is amazing. Um, but we know that there's a level of expertise, and, and, and we know that when physicians leave that care, uh, that we get that expertise. And, and there's a legitimate concern, I think, that when you look at this bill, that, that we lose some of that expertise. Um, and I want to be clear that, that, that what we're doing here is, is collaboration agreement. And there is supervision, but that supervision is not permanent. That supervision is temporary. Um, and collaboration and supervision are different. Um, now, I'm not saying that the work that hasn't been done on this bill isn't good. I think that the, that the work that the sponsors did in making sure that that collaboration agreement is with a physician um, is, a, is a step in the right direction, and, and we should have, because the way the current bill was written, that collaboration agreement could have potentially been with a, a non-medical um, entity, and, and I think that um, that there was a lot of, lot of concern around that, and so I think that uh, that making that, that change was important. But, members, I'm not sure if, if that was, it, 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 it really wasn't good enough. And, and um, you know, when we look at that, uh, you know, in that specific amendment, we had a debate on practice area. And I think that there is some still concern out there that uh, a PA practicing in, the example we used in debate, uh, a PA practicing in oncology could potentially have a, collaborative agreement with a, uh, a physician that is practicing in, um, um, in orthopedics and that those don't line up. And I think that that was one of the changes that we were trying to get made uh, and, and I wish we could have gotten there. Um, but I think one of the bigger ones for me uh, is around the supervision and the training. And so in the current bill, uh, it requires if a new PA comes out that they have 5,000 hours of supervised training minimum. Um, and that if they want to change specialties, they have 3,000 hours of that supervision and that training. Um, I think that doesn't, I think the problem there is that doesn't represent the complexity of medicine. We know that we have different specialties. You have family practice, uh, you have uh, oncology, you have pediatrics, you have geriatrics, you have uh, neurology. And when you look at physicians, they all have different levels of training. They're board certified. And so uh, maybe a family practice doctor goes through three or four years of residency, but a neurologist would go through seven or eight years of residency. And so, and that represents the complexity of the medicine. Um, and so I think that, that when we look at what this bill does and saying um, a, a physician assistant can switch specialties with just a uh, kind of an arbitrary 3,000 hours, which only represents one and a half years of full-time work, I think that's concerning. And what the amendment we were trying to place or, or have on the bill was to say, let's treat this medicine with the attention that it deserves. Let's put that onus on the medical board to come up with those hours because we know that there's a different complexity in these different, different uh, areas of, of medicine. Um, and rather than putting just a, a blanket uh, number and statute, let's, let's give it that attention it deserves. And I think that that's the appropriate way uh, to do it. If a physician wants to change specialties, they would obviously have to go back through residency uh, and follow those same guidelines. I think that it's appropriate to have the physician assistants do that. And, um, and so, so obviously we weren't able to get that amendment on. Um, you know, for those reasons, I, 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 again, I want to thank the sponsors for for really trying and attempting, I think, to, in good faith to, to find solutions. And I think we did find some solutions. I just don't think we, we got there. I think that, uh, the, the, the obviously, uh, what the good senator, uh, good senator from Alamosa and the good senator from Westminster have shown is, is how we're able to have civil discourse in this building. Um, and maybe not always agree, but I think respect where everyone is coming from and not necessarily have to, uh, have to go beyond that. And, um, and so for that reason, Mr. President, I'm going to be a no. I would urge a no vote on the bill, thank the sponsors for their work, but I just don't think that we were able to get to a place that I'm comfortable with. Thank you. Senator Liston. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, members, um, <clears throat> uh, I listened 
fairly intently the other night on Senate Bill 83, and um, I, I, I know that uh, people were coming and going, and I wanted to kind of give you, uh, again, a little more perspective. I uh, greatly appreciate uh, the uh, good work that the uh, senators, uh, Senator from uh, Alamosa and the Senator from uh, Wheat Ridge have done. Um, and before I start, uh, I'm very supportive of physicians' assistants, PAs. Uh, my primary care person for a, uh, for a long time uh, was a PA until he retired, and I had the utmost respect for him. He did a great job. So uh, I am not against PAs. I understand their role, and uh, <clears throat> uh, to a certain level, they do a, they do a great job. But <clears throat> um, the, uh, the analogy, what, what we're doing is, uh, in my opinion, on this bill is that we're allowing PAs that have a, a, uh, an understanding of some intricate uh, types of surgeries and medicine, uh, even with uh, 3,000 hours of, of supervision that, uh, that, that they can, uh, I won't say suddenly, that they can go out and do some pretty sophisticated procedures. Um, without getting into the, into the details, as I mentioned to you, um, uh, I am currently undergoing um, treatment for, for some cancer. And um, I can guarantee you that, uh, uh, to begin with, before I went uh, for this treatment, um, uh, my PA is the person who recommended that, that I go see a urologist. Uh, which I did, and um, uh, after extensive uh, testing and so forth, the uh, my urologist uh, said, "You know, you you need to undergo uh, some uh, some uh, pretty sophisticated uh, advanced treatment," which I did, and before I could go through the advanced treatment, I had to see a specialized urologist. He was the only person in Colorado Springs that could do this procedure on me, the only person. And unfortunately, uh, having gone through it, I can uh, testify that I cannot imagine, uh, no offense against a PA, uh, I cannot imagine a PA doing this procedure uh, on me or others. Uh, it was it was not fun, um, but my original urologist, I I went in there expecting or thinking that that he would do this procedure. To my great chagrin, he could not do it, and I had to see this specialized urologist, and he did it, and um, that was before I could under undergo. Uh, radiation treatment and um, having undergone that uh, I can assure you that uh, his assistant who was there uh, uh, all the time could not do this procedure and I cannot imagine that a PA no matter how well intentioned could do this uh, could do this procedure fortunately I think it's going to work out um, you all have, uh, also are aware, some of you, that, uh, uh, that I have, uh, my son-in-law is what's called a uh, neurologist, uh, 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 not a neurologist, a, uh, he's a uh, neuro, uh, 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 got the name mixed up, he does very sophisticated uh, skull-based surgery, very sophisticated. He went through medical school for four years. His residency was not three years, it wasn't four years, it was a five-year residency. A five-year residency is what's required, which he did at Yale Medical School, by the way, which is no slouch medical school. Then when he was done with his five years of intensive residency, he did a two-year fellowship 
that he had to pay for himself. It was unpaid fellowship. And then he practiced. Uh, uh, he's, like I say, does any of you, if you ever have a cochlear implant, he would be the type of person that you would see. If you've had some very uh, unfortunate problems within your ear and major surgery, my son-in-law would be the person that you would see. Not a regular ENT, uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor, which are also highly trained, and certainly not a regular doctor. You would see a neuroautologist. That's the word I was looking for, a neuroautologist. Uh, I cannot imagine that any PA, no matter uh, uh, how well intentioned they are, could begin to do the type of sophisticated surgery that my son-in-law does. Um, and to bring it down to uh, just a regular uh, level, um, to use a sports analogy, you know, we, 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 have, we have baseball season that's going to start here in another few weeks. We have double A and triple A and then major leagues. You know, there's very good baseball players in triple A baseball. They are very good, they're excellent, but they're still not in the major leagues. Um, and uh, they're, they're not there because they don't quite have the skills that a major league baseball player has. And that's an analogy, you know, we have PAs and we have regular doctors and then we have specialists. Uh, same is true in, in, in football. We could use other sports analogies. I know and understand where the sponsors of this are coming from. Certainly the, uh, the, the many tens of thousands of residents who live in rural Colorado want to be able to have surgery without having to travel, uh, you know, 100 or 200 miles. I get that. But, you know, don't be uh, penny wise and pound foolish. You think that a PA might be able to do it for you, but you're betting, in some cases, you're betting your life or your hearing or uh, other major uh, parts of your body that it's going to be done correctly by a person who is well-intentioned but does not have that level of sophisticated training and knowledge that you don't get by just watching. So. With all due respect, um, I say I fully understand PAs are great, I love them, they're wonderful people, they, they do a good job, but it's not the same. Take it from someone who actually knows from personal experience. So with all due respect, I would urge you to think about this. I personally am going to be a no vote, not because of, of the good work that uh, has been done on this bill, but for the uh, health and safety of future patients, let's not inadvertently put uh, patients and APA in a relationship that doesn't work out. Thank you very much. Senator Smallwood. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, colleagues. So I just, um, wanted to say just a few words on Senate Bill 83, um, because I'm going to be a no vote today on it. And it wasn't, this is not an easy decision. I want to thank the Senator from Thornton um, for sharing his sort of real world thoughts on this. You know, there's, I don't think a lot of us that have spent time in a clinical setting, uh, at least as something other than a patient. So hearing, hearing uh, the real world implications of this is, is a big part of my no vote. But, um, you know, I, I tend to really support healthcare practitioners working at the very top of their scope, right? I mean, I try to champion uh, healthcare affordability, and a big part of that is making sure that folks are able to get care in the most cost effective way. And part and parcel in that is making sure that providers can operate at the top of their scope. Um, what concerns me about the language in this bill is exactly what the Senator from Thornton talked about, which is at some point super, direct supervision ends under this bill. Um, and that may be an okay thing at some point in the future. When we think of the dental therapy bill, I think that's a good example where we create really a new occupation in healthcare to, to bridge the gap 
between somebody that really is not clinical in nature and what they're doing versus somebody who went to dental school. Um, many of you were here when we passed the advanced practice paramedic bill, right? An entirely new class of healthcare provider that can do more than what a paramedic can do, but still we acknowledge that this person did, probably did not go to med school or certainly didn't finish med school. Uh, so what I would encourage the sponsors to do with this bill, and the idea got bounced around a little bit, but didn't really get any traction here in the Senate, and I think that it's something that we should consider in the, the House, and I would encourage the sponsors to talk to the House sponsors about it, is maybe taking a look at physician assistant and wondering if, they're, if this occupation either needs to change or we need to have a different occupation inserted in here. Because for me anyways, the semantics of this really are important. When you say that you are a physician's assistant, I think logically one would think that you are assisting a physician. And at some point under this bill, that doesn't really, at least not in my opinion, doesn't really have to happen anymore. So what, the idea we kicked around a little bit, I'm not sure if any of you heard it, was to, to modernize the language and maybe start calling these folks physician associates. And I know a lot of people, you get, see looks on some faces, you know, change it, well, I'm conservative, so by definition, I'm not big into change. Progressives tend to like progress, right, and more promote change, um, good or bad. So that's a joke. It's a joke, Mr. President. It's just a joke. Is my mic still on? So, yeah. So I know people don't always like change, okay? And when I was prime sponsor on the dental therapy bill, there were a lot of people saying, you know, don't really like change. We don't need to, we don't need to change this. We have, we have dental assistants and we have dentists. We are, you're gonna confuse the population with this new job title. And we heard a little about that with advanced practice paramedics. And I am assuming that years ago, we heard about this when it came to advanced practice nurses or nurse practitioners, like, hold on, what is, this person can pre prescribe medications, what are, we, what are we doing here? You're gonna confuse the population. Is this a doctor, is it a nurse, what is this? But the, these are changes that we've made and um, I think by and large they've been good. And so, again, what I'd ask the senator who I guess moved to Wheat Ridge, um, <laughs> um, uh, the, good, the good sponsors might uh, really consider whether or not the title physician assistant is maybe now antiquated, or that there needs to be a new occupation altogether. Because what I think is really going to confuse the population is that when somebody walks into that hospital room, into that doctor's office, and they're meeting with somebody whose name badge says physician's assistant, I don't think it's preposterous to assume that that patient thinks that somewhere there is a physician that this person is assisting. And again, that's what we're taking away. Granted, it's after thousands of hours of additional education and experience, so I don't want to take anything away from the, from the bill on that side. But that is what's going to happen at some point. So I think what we have to ask ourselves is, how is the patient gonna be more confused? Is the patient gonna be more confused because we now have this job title that, that for many of us in the room sounds different, this new occupation sounds different, we might not know what it is and it might take a generation to be as comfortable with physician associate as we all are today or most of us are today with nurse practitioner. Is, it, is that more confusing or is it more confusing when you're meeting with the physician assistant three years from now, looking around going, where's the physician? And the answer is, there isn't one, because there doesn't need to be. So for those reasons, colleagues, that's why I'm gonna be a no vote on Senate Bill 83. And again, more than anything else would 
encourage the bill sponsors to think a little bit outside the box on this, that it might be time to modernize the occupation altogether. So thank you, Mr. President. Senator Fields. Good morning, Mr. President and colleagues. I'm going to do my best to try to summarize what happened in committee um, because we had a robust, fruitful discussion about PAs, physician assistants. We had some folks that were for it, and of course we had the PAs there in strong support of the position, of the changes. At the end of the day, I could tell you that I felt like the, the bill sponsors have done a really good job listening to some of the concerns and some of the feedback, and they've made amendments along the way. And so this is my takeaway from the discussion and from the debate. There is a difference between a PA and a physician. We all know it. I don't think there's any confusion in reference to a PA and an MD. When you go to an MD, you're seeing a doctor, and a doctor has taken the MCAT exam, they've gone to medical school, they've done their residency. That's a physician. That's a doctor. And you heard my colleague mention in reference to the number of hours and expense that it takes to be a physician. It's really rigorous to be a doctor. And when everyone is sick and they need um, to get well, you want to see a physician that has the specialty to meet the needs of the illness that you have. Then on the other side, you have a physician assistant. A physician assistant is not a doctor. The terminology is that they're an assistant. So for me, I have a, um, a physician assistant. But she is supervised. And so whenever I go and there's something I need, she is always consulting with the physician the primary care provider that's overseeing my overall health. She's a navigator. And my doctor will ask, what's going on with uh, Senator Fields? There is a collaborative discussion as it relates to what my health needs are. My concern at the beginning of the bill, it was going to remove supervision from the agreement and shifting it to a collaborative approach. Over the course of amendments, we now have that um, you have to have 5,000 hours of supervision, and then after that, there's no more supervision. But if you switch to a specialty, then the bill says it's just 3,000 hours and then no supervision. That's my understanding. The, the, the bill sponsors can correct me if I'm wrong, but that was um, what I got after it, that there is supervision and it's based on if it's brand new or if you're jumping into a new specialty. So there was a lot of talk about this is going to help rural Colorado. And we had a, um, one of the prime bill sponsors talked about the needs in rural Colorado. He mentioned the number of locations that don't have any doctors at all. And they may have to travel a long way to get access to be behavioral health or physical health. And then I believe he said that there was one uh, PA in the rural area, of course. It's not just rural Colorado that's experiencing a deficit as it relates to behavioral health workers. We have a shortage of workers all across our state in just about every profession that you can think of. But this idea that this is going to promote PAs in rural Colorado was something that's prevalent 
throughout the language in this bill. And we heard from CMS and other folks thinking that, mm, I'm not quite sure if that's the case. And they talked about the challenges that exist in rural Colorado, but at least it's some kind of pathway. We had a bill that was sponsored uh, here out of the Senate that kind of targeted specifically how we can increase um, health care providers for rural Colorado. I'm not quite sure what the intersection is between the two, but uh, that's one approach that I know that we put a lot of money behind making sure that we were um, doing the right thing by providing more access, affordable access to rural Colorado. But my understanding, when we get to this collaborative agreement and this supervision, my understanding, the reason we're using this collaborative agreement concept is to give the employer, that doctor who's employing a PA, some flexibility in reference to how they want to navigate and manage that practice within that location or within that doctor's office. That collaborative agreement gives that opportunity for that dialogue to take place and for them to have the, the structure that they want to be able to do the work that needs to be done to take care of the patients that they see. I personally believe, based on the PAs that I talk to, that they take a tremendous amount of pride in being a PA and that they see a, a bright line or a red line, whatever you want to call it, they know the difference between crossing the line between a PA's responsibility and those of a physician. They understand that. They don't want any malpractice in reference to the kind of service that they provide patients that they would do everything within their control to make sure if they had any doubts or questions that they would interface with their physician to making sure that what they were doing would be right and would be fair and would, would be appropriate. Because if it's not, there are consequences for that. So this is uh, an issue as it relates to trust. PAs. Uh, the role of a PA is not new. Someone talked about terminology. We know what an assistant is. So a physician assistant, dental assistant, surgical assistant, it is to assist. Within the scope of the practice. So it's my understanding that this bill, Senate Bill 83, does not change the scope of practice for providing health care to patients. But what it does do, it does put in some really hefty hours of requirements of supervision. I was hung up on the supervision. No one likes to be supervised, OK? And this is what this bill was originally trying to say, we don't want any supervision. But the, the reality is you have to have supervision, even if you don't like it. We just can't have people just kind of doing whatever they want when it's talking about people's overall well-being and health care. Supervision is important. I believe that part of the bill addresses it. I believe they should have ongoing, continuous supervision. I don't think it stops at 5,000 hours. I think it's as long as you're practicing on somebody, you should be supervised by a primary physician. That's the way I feel. So then you have to decide your own understanding. We talk to doctors about the, the hours, 2,000 hours, 3,000, you know, how did you get to those hours? And um, no. I don't know. But we did have doctors talk about the number of hours that they have to achieve to be a physician, to be a doctor, 
and it's nowhere close to the 5,000 or 3,000 that you see in this bill. Senator Fields, would you like to go into your next 10 minutes? Thank you, um, Mr. President. I will stop my remarks there. Okay. Senator Simpson. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning to the chamber. Um, first off, I want to uh, offer special recognition and thanks to the good senator from Thornton um, and our relationship. I, I got to say, in 60 days, uh, he and I have built quite a, a working relationship together where we're co-sponsors on a bill together and then up here uh, on very different viewpoints on another bill <laughs> in the same committee meeting the other night. So I, I appreciate his passion and interest in serving his constituents well. I, I did want to highlight a couple of things about the bill. The bill is absolutely not an expansion of the scope of work of a PA. They continue to practice within what their uh, standards and, and their training is. It's not about offering an independent practice. I've seen lots of reference to this is going to allow a PA to open, hang their shingle out and open up their own practice. That's, that's not the case. Um, it's not going to resolve and solve the rural health crisis at all in access to care, but it is, it is an attempt and it will lift one particular barrier or obstacle to providing health care in rural Colorado. That's what got me interested in this space about a PA in, in Lamar in particular, who have been a practicing PA for 20 years, but under the current structure and statute and direct supervision of a physician in the building with her, when the physician left and, and the clinic failed to attract and retain a new physician, she's stuck without being able to provide the same services she's been providing to the same patients for more than a decade. And this is an attempt to work through some of those challenges and those issues. It, it, listening to testimony in committee last week was also a reminder that collaboration is what we do. This is what the healthcare teams provide in a clinical setting, in the hospital setting. And for me, this is just an effort to codify in statute what we've been doing and what we've been practicing. We didn't get to talk a lot the other night about this. It's the same kind of structure that exists in at least 20 other states and the District of Columbia. I'm confident we can provide quality health care to constituents across the state. And again, with for me, a particular focus and interest in, in uh, rural parts of the state. We pulled some data from um, CDPHE or from January of this year, just a reference to the physician count in some of the rural counties. With f counties with no physicians registered, licensed, practicing uh, in uh, January of this year, Cheyenne County, none. Costilla County, none. Crowley County, none. Hinsdale County, none. Jackson County, none. Kiowa County, none. Mineral County, none. Sawatch County, none, San Juan County, none, and Washington County, none. So in some of those inst instances, there are nurse practitioners, and on a rare occasion, you can actually have uh, a nurse practitioner where I, 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 at times there has to be a physician there, and that's when that, that uh, PA can function under their scope of practice. Um, and, and look, the bill is structured really, for me, it really raises the bar for a PA. We talked about adding 3,000 hours when you're going to change your specialty. We, we touched on this the other night in, in the debate on seconds on the floor, but a, a reminder, in current statute, uh, a physician assistant currently licensed who has practiced at least 12 months but wants to change their scope of practice, there's a, a minimal requirement that the physician assistant's first 80 hours, 80 hours will be supervised by a supervising physician who works at the same location as the physician assistant. That's the extent of the criteria to make that change. What we've proposed is 3,000 hours of direct supervision before they can move into a collaborative agreement. And lastly, a reminder about the collaborative agreement is the floor, that a physician, a clinic, a hospital, a team can construct the arrangement in the collaborative agreement to the level that serves their 
their patient's best interest at heart. And it can be uh, you, however you want to imagine it, uh, the same practice area, more hours, more direct supervision. It, it, a reminder, the bill really just does establish a, a floor, and then we can build from that. I'm confident, again, the bill can continue to provide excellent health care um, for constituents, mine in particular in rural Colorado, but across the state of Colorado. I would appreciate your support today. Thank you, Mr. President. Senator Winter. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. At this time, I'd like to ask for permission to offer a third reading amendment. It's going to be fine. It's going to be and then fine. Finish what? <laughs> Will you uh, please explain the reason for a third reading amendment, Senator Winter? Thank you, Mr. President. This was just an honest mistake. The other night during our um, debate, we had established that we wanted to remove the term employer, that an employer could sign off on a collaborative agreement, and only a physician or physician group did. There was two places in the bill that were missed and, and just a mistake. So we're abiding to our agreement that the only way a collaborative agreement comes into formation is with a physician or physician group. It's a technical um, fix. The question before the body is Senator Winter's request for permission to offer a third reading amendment. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it and permission is granted. There is an amendment at the the desk. Will the clerk please read Amendment 22? Amendment L. Senator Winter. Thank you, Mr. President. I move Amendment L022. To the amendment. Um, as I said, this is a technical cleanup to um, make sure that we are meeting our agreement to have collaborative agreements signed off on with a physician or physician group. Is there any discussion? The motion is for the adoption of Amendment 22 to Senate. Bill 83. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 34 ayes, zero noes, zero absent, one excused, that amendment is adopted. To the bill. Senator Winter. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, everyone, for your time and rigorous and honorable debate on this bill. I think we spent a lot of time talking about the safeguards that are in there to ensure we're honoring physicians' voices, so I'm not going to reiterate that. But as we're ending our debate on this bill, I want to talk about the reasons we brought this bill forward. And it's that something isn't working. That when a physician's assistant is tethered to a single physician in how we're offering health care, we are limiting and not acknowledging the expertise that PAs are bringing to the table. So we've heard stories about PAs that offered MAT therapy, which we have worked really hard to increase access to in this chamber, and their physician moves on or retires or changes facilities, and then that PA no longer can offer that MAT therapy. And yes, it has a larger impact in rural areas, but that example comes from actually Rose Community Center where we're treating a lot of people with mat therapy. And by having them tethered to one single physician, if the PA moves somewhere or goes to a new facility and is entering into an agreement where they've done a decade worth of work in both dermatology and being in a family practice, and their new physician only does family practice, we're losing that experience of dermatology. So we are saying, let's honor the experience, the expertise, the training that the PAs have, Let's do it in a safe way, which I think we had a lot of debate and added those safety guardrails to make sure that everyone's practicing at the top of their range, we're honoring that expertise, and, and patients are getting the care they need. And I encourage you yes vote. The motion before the body is the adoption of Senate Bill 83. See no further discussion. Are there any no votes? Senators Van Winkle, Hansen, Roberts, Mollica, Smallwood, Kirkmeyer, Liston, Rich.
With a vote of 26 ayes, 8 noes, 0 absent, 1 excuse, Senate Bill 83 is passed. Co-sponsors. Senators Pelton R. Will Cutter. Jaquez Lewis. Pelton B. Exum. Priola. General orders, second reading of bills, consent calendar, Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate resolve itself into the Committee of the Whole for consideration of general orders, second reading of bills, consent calendar. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. no. The motion is adopted and the Senate will resolve itself in the Committee of the Whole for the consideration of the general orders. Second reading of bills, consent calendar, and Senator Roberts will take the chair. The committee, the committee will come to order and the coat rule is relaxed. Will the clerk please read the title of all the bills on the general order's second reading of bills consent calendar. Senate Bill 88, Senators Pelton B. and Fields, Representative Winter T. concerning an offender's eligibility for re release from confinement and in connection therewith informing the victim of an offense of changes to an offender's projected release date. House Bill 1139, Representative Martinez, Senator Simpson concerning the modification of the salary categorization of locally elected officers in specified counties. House Bill 1141, Representatives Lindsay and Story, Senators Henriksen and Mullica concerning the authority of History Colorado to dispose of three properties and in connection therewith authorizing the disposal of the real properties known as the McFarland House in Central City, the Pierce McAllister Cottage in Denver, and the Pueblo Museum Support Center in Pueblo. House Bill 1087, Representatives Catlin and McLaughlin, Senators Roberts and Will, concerning a requirement that the state controller promulgate fiscal rules governing advance payments for the purchase of state agricultural products by a charitable food organization using state grant money. House Bill 1106, Representatives Evans and Byrd, Senators Kochler and Will, concerning authorizing the Board of the Fire and Police Pension Association to provide non-compounding cost of living adjustments. Senate Bill 150, Senators Roberts and Will, Representatives Frolix and Frizzell, concerning a requirement that certain persons labeled disposable wipes. Majority Leader Moreno. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move for the passage of all the bills listed on the second reading consent calendar and their associated committee reports, which includes Senate Bill 88 and the Associated Judiciary Committee Report, House Bill 1139 and the Local Government and Housing Committee Report, House Bill 1141, House Bill 1087, House Bill 1106, and Senate Bill 150, and the Business, Labor, and Technology Committee Report. Is there any discussion on the committee reports? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of all the committee reports on the general order second reading of bills consent calendar. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the committee reports are adopted. Is there any discussion on any of the bills on the consent calendar? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of all the bills on the general order second reading of bills consent calendar. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the bills are adopted. Majority Leader Moreno. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the committee rise and report. The motion is for the committee to rise and report. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the motion is adopted. The committee will rise and report.
The Senate will come to order. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the report. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. The committee has had a number of bills under consideration. Will the clerk please read the report? Mr. President, your committee of the whole begs leave to report. It has had yes, under consideration the following attached bills being the second reading thereof and makes the following recommendations thereon. Senate Bill 88 is amended. Senate Bill 150 is amended. Fast on second reading and ordered and gross and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. House Bills 1139 is amended. 1141, 1087, 1106 passed on second reading and order devised and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President. I now move the report. The motion is the adoption of the Committee of the Whole Report. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excused, the Committee of the Whole Report is adopted. Senate Bill 88 is amended. Senate Bill 150 is amended, passed in second reading in order in gross, and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. House Bill 1139 is amended. House Bill 1141. House Bill 1087. House Bill 1106 passed in second reading in order to revise and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. General order, second reading of bills. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the Senate resolve itself into the Committee of the Whole for the consideration of general orders, second reading of bills. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. The Senate will resolve itself into the Committee of the Whole for the consideration of the general orders. Second reading of bills, and Senator Roberts will take the chair. The committee will come to order and the coat rule is relaxed. Will the clerk, Majority Leader Moreno. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move to lay over Senate Bill 93 to the end of the second reading calendar. The motion is to lay over the Senate Bill 93 to the end of the second reading calendar. Is there any, uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. For those opposed, no. The ayes have it and Senate Bill 93 we laid over to the end of the calendar. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill Sorry. Will the clerk please read the title of House Bill 1111? House Bill 1111, Representative Byrd, Senator Hansen, concerning harmonization of the unauthorized insurance premium tax rate with the surplus lines insurance premium, premium tax rate. Senator Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move for the passage of House Bill 1111 on second reading. To the bill. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, no changes made in committee, but this is a bill that came out of the Interim Tax Policy Committee, which I'm pleased to represent uh, my colleagues on that, that committee as we do both this bill and the next one came out of that process. This one simply aligns uh, a small number of uh, unauthorized insurance uh, policies that fit into that statutory definition into the surplus lines insurance premium rate and uh, brings those into alignment. Is there any further discussion on House Bill 1111? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of House Bill 1111. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 1111 is adopted. Will the clerk please read the title to House Bill 1121? House Bill 1121, sure. Representative Byrd yeah. and Senator sure. Hansen and sure. Liston concerning the repeal of infrequently used tax expenditures. Senator Liston. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, colleagues, uh, uh, as my good uh, uh, colleague from Senator from Denver has said, uh, this bill, 1121, came out of our tax policy uh, committee. And it's uh, really an attempt to clean up and modernize uh, some obsolete expenditures that, uh, that are no longer uh, used, you know, and some tax uh, ramifications. Just give you a couple of examples. Uh, of what we did uh, uh, of, the, of the 10 expenditures that we uh, are asking to be repealed. The oil shale excess percentage depletion income tax deduction and the corporate con condemnation capital gains income tax deduction. And there were several others that are, like I say, seldom if ever used. So with that, I would respectfully ask for an aye vote on House Bill 1121. And uh, Senator- And move 1121. Thank you. Uh, House Bill 1121 has now been moved. Any further discussion? Senator Pelton. 
Thank you, Mr. Is an amendment on the desk. Will the clerk please read Amendment L001? Amendment L001 by Pelton R, Senator Pelton R. Amended printed bill, page two, Lenton Street. Senator Pelton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I move Amendment 001. To the amendment, Senator Pelton. Thank you, Mr. Chair. What this amendment does uh, in the bill, uh, they're striking the crop insurance premium uh, portion of this, and I, I understand that the reason it's being stricken is because the language and statute doesn't allow any, anybody to use it. I would like to keep it in there to use that as uh, a place to start the conversation. I know the conversation was started. I wanted to continue uh, to find a way to uh, allow farmers to use crop hail insurance premiums as a de tax deduction. Uh, as everybody knows, agriculture is a wholesale business. We buy wholesale, and, or we sell wholesale, but we buy retail. So uh, any chance we can to help the farmers is a good one. So with that, uh, I would ask for support for 001. Senator Hanson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And members, I'd urge a no vote on L001. We had extensive conversation about this uh, over the interim and talked with many of the agriculture stakeholders. The current statute uh, dates back several decades. Uh, it is non-functional, and this is really about statutory cleanup. If uh, a member wants to bring forward a bill to ad address this area in a different way, I think that's totally fine. Uh, but at this point, I would ask for a no vote on L001 uh, so that we get rid of the outdated statutory language. Is there any further discussion on L001? Seeing none, the motion for the body is the adoption of L001. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. no. The no's have it, and L001 is lost. Is there any further discussion on the bill? Seeing none, the, question, the motion before the body is the adoption of House Bill 1121. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. House Bill 1121 is adopted. Majority Leader Moreno. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move House Bill 1030 layover until Thursday, March 16th. You have heard the motion. The question before the body is to lay over House Bill 11, 1030 until March 16th. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and House Bill 1030 is laid over until March 16th. Will the clerk please read the title of Senate Bill 93? Senate Bill 93, Senator Cutter and Hakas Lewis, Representative Weissman, concerning increasing consumer protections in various medical transactions. Senator Hakas Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move Senate Bill 93 and the Associated Health and Human Services Committee Report. To the committee report, Senator Hawkins Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So medical debt can be a very complex uh, subject matter. And for those of you that have ever had to deal with a complicated surgery or cancer diagnosis, uh, you know that there can be many different medical bills coming in, surgeons, doctors, radiologists, pharmacists. Um, and of course, we worked with all of those folks on this bill. I want to give a special uh, shout out to uh, the senator, our wonderful senator from uh, Parker, who has been helping us on this bill. Um, the biggest group of folks that we have had to um, spend a lot of time with, and it was, it was definitely enlightening on our part, is the debt collectors. So we had L001, which was a four-page amendment, basically incorporating all of the, their concerns. Uh, and L002, which passed committee, is a work in progress. And the, the great senator from Parker is um, pledging to continue to work with us and the attorney general on the debt assignment discussion. Um, and so we actually will have even more work on it coming up. But that is the committee report, Mr. Chair. Is there any further discussion on the committee report? Seeing none, the motion for the adoption, the body is the adoption of the Health and Human Services Committee Report. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the committee report is adopted. To the bill. Uh, nope, we have an amendment. We ha there is an amendment at the desk. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think she has to read it. Yeah, yeah. Will the clerk please read the title of L006? 
or read uh, Amendment L006. Amendment L006 by Senator Cutter, amend the Health and Senator Human Services. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move Amendment L006. To the amendment, Senator Cutter. Um, so this amends the committee report in the bill. Um, just to clarify some, further clarify some, um, the definition of medical debt, um, and tighten that up a bit, deal with some of the um, conflicts with credit card debt, and really overall removes um, a piece, as uh, my colleague here discussed about um, debt assignments that it, we're going to continue to work on further this summer um, with uh, the Senator from Parker. So I ask for your support. Is there any further discussion on L006? Seeing none, the motion before the body is the adoption of L006. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and L006 is adopted. To the bill, Senator Hawkins Lewis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We are just so pleased to be able to present Senate Bill 93 as adopted uh, because um, it really will give a reasonable estimate of the total cost of services in advance of those services to Coloradans who are trying to figure out how they're going to pay for uh, many, many of this, um, many of the, the medical care um, that they face. And uh, we are really pleased that we'll be able to align our Colorado statutes with the federal law, the No Surprises Act. Senator Cutter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, right, we're, we're really excited to bring this bill. There's people all over the state struggling with medical debt after um, dealing with severe and chronic illnesses and health issues, and this is something um, they shouldn't be having to deal with at a time when they're already um, really low. So we're just increasing transparency, capping the debt interest, and um, just making it a better process for um, people undergoing health care challenges. And I ask for your support. Is there any further discussion? Senator Rich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we did hear this bill in committee. I was a no vote, and I'll probably be a no vote today. Um, I, uh, first, I had a problem uh, with capping the interest of a medical debt to 3%. That seems to unfairly discriminate against other debt that's out there. Um, another thing is that under this bill, a consumer could hypothetically continuously appeal their medical debt and effecti effectively present the, uh, prevent themselves from ever having to pay back that debt as the hospital would be prohibited from collecting debt during the duration of the appeals process. So it seems to be a workaround to uh, have the hospital carry the debt as long as they're uh, you know, being sued or, or appealing this. And uh, this could go on, and I could see how this could even be abused. So I uh, am asking for a no vote on this bill. Thank you. Senate, further discussion, Senator Smallwood. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Colleagues, um, I appreciate the comments from the Senator on the Western Slope. I share some of those concerns and um, would really encourage the bill sponsors, again, it's probably a little late in this process, but um, perhaps in the House, to address the issue of that percentage. Here's, here's where I feel a little different than some on the, the interest rate. So, um, because I had the same concern, like, why is, why is this interest rate so low? And after thinking about it for a while, and again, knowing all the, the patients that I work with on a, on a weekly or monthly basis who are, who are facing exactly this, I think what we have to remember is very often this was not a decision that the purchaser made, right? Like, if you go to buy a home, and you make a decision as to what you think you as a family, you as an individual may be able to afford, you weigh in the interest rate, you know, is this a, a payment that I feel comfortable with? And you make, and let's say you make a bad decision, you make a poor decision. Well, I, I feel that as a consumer, you need to take some responsibility for that decision. If you go to purchase a new car, 
and you're looking at your budget, how much money you make, what the interest rate on your loan is going to be, and you make a decision to purchase a new car, and it turns out that you were wrong, well, I think you need to take some responsibility as a purchaser that you didn't make a very good decision or that something changed in your life. When it, so often when it comes to medical debt, though, what we're dealing with is um, not really a decision necessarily that the purchaser wanted to make or felt like they could afford or even knew candidly what the price was going to be before they went and made that purchase. And for those listening online, I'm putting purchase in air quotes in an attempt to be very facetious. Okay? Um, people can end up with tens of thousands of dollars worth of medical debt, I see it regularly because of a provision in their insurance contract that they either didn't know was there, they didn't understand it, it was difficult to comprehend. They go get an emergency procedure, right? An ambulance comes, takes you someplace. The physicians perhaps do, do procedures on you, um, whether you're conscious or not and you can end up with this medical debt. So I do feel like, again, not taking anything away from the good senator from the West Slope, but I do feel that medical debt very often needs to be looked at a little bit differently than most consumer debt because, again, the purchaser didn't, very often didn't want to make this purchase and very often didn't know what that purchase was going to cost. Um, but I appreciate the Senator bringing up the 3% because I think that this is something that a future assembly is going to need to come back to readdress. Um, as a child, I grew up in an interest rate environment in the high teens. My dad was thrilled to get a, a mortgage at 15% because everybody else was paying 17%. Okay? This, this wasn't five generations ago, right? This was in the 70s. So to assume that we can peg a number at 3%, and think that it's gonna be evergreen, quite honestly, colleagues, I think is probably a little foolish, right? If we get back into a world of 17% interest rates or 22% interest rates, to assume that 3% is reasonable, that's, that's, that's a pretty big stretch for me. This will work for now, but what I would really like the bill sponsors to entertain and what I would be more in support of, of is a prime minus. So you take the current interest rates today that a conscious purchaser would be paying for their cars or electronics or cherry coke, whatever it might be, and instead we, we come back off of that number, a prime minus one, a prime minus two, a prime minus three. I don't know what the right number is with a floor, right? Because if we did prime minus two last year, we'd end up having to, having to pay the, the creditor money Right, and come with a negative. So, so I really, really like the idea of prime minus with a floor. I think we'll be saving our colleagues two years from now, three years from now, five years from now, from having to come back and address this bill again and have arguments again as to what is fair. But again, I wanna be really, really clear. I think that it is misguided to assume that somebody with medical debt should be treated the same way that somebody who has a, a, a car payment or a house payment or, or credit card debt because of the situation so often when it comes to them incurring that debt. Um, I, I do want to thank the bill sponsors though. I told them in committee and probably before and after committee that I really want to uh, be a yes vote on this. I do think that it is important for the consumer to more easily be able to get um, itemized lists of the bills that they owe and who they owe them to, that is a challenge. Our, our system is just clunky when you've got lots and lots of bills from lots and lots of different providers. And I'm hoping that this legislation moves us in the right direction to make it easier for people to understand the bills that they have, the debt that they owe, I, and I do like the idea of there being some sort of recognition that the debt that these folks are incurred really should be treated different than other debt. So I appreciate the amendment, L006. That is exactly what I was hoping to see. And again, I want to thank the bill sponsors for that and hope that they take my words to heart when it comes to uh, a more long-term solution to that uh, interest rate that's in the bill. Thank you.
Is there further, any further discussion on Senate Bill 93? Seeing none, the motion before the, adopt, the body is the adoption of Senate Bill 93. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and Senate Bill 93 is adopted. Majority Leader Moreno. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move the committee rise and report. You have heard the motion. Uh, the committee, uh, the motion for the body is for the committee to rise and report. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it, and the committee will rise and report. Senate will come to order. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the committee has met and had a number of bills under consideration. Will the clerk please read the report? Mr. President, your committee at the whole beds leave to report. It has had under consideration the following attached bills, being the second reading thereof, and makes the following recommendations thereon. Senate Bill 93, as amended, passed on second reading, and ordered and grossed and placed on the calendar for a third reading and final passage. House Bill 1111, House Bill 1121, passed on second reading, and ordered revised and placed on the calendar for third reading and final passage. House Bill 1030, laid over until March 16, 2023, and retaining its place on the calendar. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption of the report. The motion is the adoption of the Committee of the Whole report. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excused, the Committee of the Whole report is adopted. <laughs> Senate Bill 93 is amended, passed in second reading order in gross, and placed on the calendar for third reading final passage. House Bill 1111 and 1121 passed in second reading order revised, and placed on the calendar for third reading final passage. House Bill 1030 laid over until March 16th and retaining its place on the calendar. Consideration of House amendments to Senate bills. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 28. Senate Bill 28, Senator Gonzalez, Representatives Epps and Soper concerning the penalty for committee any of certain offenses involving the operation of a commercial vehicle. Senator Gonzalez. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I personally am inclined uh, to concur. However, in deference to my colleagues, I am going to request a conference committee on Senate Bill 28. So I move to reject the House amendments and to uh, request that the, Senate, that the Senate President appoint a conference committee. Happy to. Is there any discussion? The motion is that the Senate not concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 28 and that a conference committee be appointed. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excused, the motion is adopted. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 95. Senate Bill 95, Senator Janal and Gardner, Representative Soper and Doherty, concerning criminalizing unlawfully pointing a laser device at an aircraft. Senator Janal. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate concur with the House amendments to Senate Bill 95. Senator Janal, please explain why we would do such a thing. Thank you, Mr. President, I shall. The House amended the bill um, to make sure that the incident of the laser strike, the laser being pointed at the aircraft is reported by the pilot or crew member um, of the impacted aircraft and that they report that to law enforcement. I ask for an eye vote. Is there any discussion? The motion is that the Senate concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 95. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excused, the motion is adopted. 
Senator Janal. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the repassage of Senate Bill 95. The motion is the repassage of Senate Bill 95. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 34 ayes, zero noes, zero absent, one excuse, Senate Bill 95 is repassed. Co-sponsors. Senator Smallwood is already a co-sponsor. Will the clerk please read the title to Senate Bill 84. Senate Bill 84, Senators Marchman and Gonzalez, Representative Young, concerning the calculation of full-time employment for teachers at higher education institutions for purposes of the Federal Public Loan Forgiveness Program. Senator Marchman. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate concur with the House amendments to Senate Bill 84. Senator Marchman, can you explain what the amendments were? Yes, Mr. President. They changed this so that colleges are required to only provide records that they have rather than records that they actually don't have. Is there any discussion? The motion is that the Senate concur with House amendments to Senate Bill 84. Are there any no votes? With a vote of 34 ayes, zero noes, zero absent, one excuse, the motion is adopted. Senator Marchman. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the repassage of Senate Bill 84. The motion is the repassage of Senate Bill 84. Are there any no votes? Senators Van Winkle, Will, Baisley, Rich, Minority Leader Lundeen, Smallwood, Kirkmeyer, Liston, Pelton, B, Pelton, R, Simpson. Simpson C. Gardner, with a vote of 22 ayes, 12 noes, zero absent, one excuse, Senate Bill 84 is repassed. Co-sponsors. Consideration of governor's appointments, consent calendar. Will the clerk please read all of the appointments listed on the consent calendar? Members of the Colorado Lottery Commission for terms expiring July 1st, 2026, Stanley Henry Podolsky III of Fort Collins, Colorado to serve as a certified public accountant reappointed, Janelle Quick of Pueblo, Colorado to serve as a public member appointed. Majority Leader Moreno. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the confirmation of all the appointments listed on the consent calendar, which includes members of the Colorado Lottery Commission. Members, we are on final action on an item, so please do keep it down in the chamber. Is there any discussion? The motion is the confirmation of all of the appointments listed on the consent calendar. Are there any no votes? With 34 ayes, zero no, zero absent, one excuse, the appointments are confirmed. Announcements. Senator Cutter. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Um, members, today is Mental Health Colorado's Advocacy Day, and there's mental health advocates from across the state here, so I hope you make some time to talk to them about the behavioral health legislation that's moving through the body now and the mental health in our communities overall. I know it's something important to all of us, so give, please go look for them. Senator Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, the Business Labor Technology Committee will meet upon adjournment. I will set that meeting time to 11.15. See you there. Senator Hawkins Lewis. Thank you, Mr. President. The Senate Local Government and Housing will meet upon adjournment. 3.52, we just have one bill, Senate Bill 148. And we will also set our meeting time at 11.15. Senator Fields. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the Senate Health and Human Services Committee, we will be meeting at 1.30, and we have five bills on our calendar today. Thank you. Senator Roberts. Thank you, Mr. President. Agriculture and Natural Resources Committee, we are meeting this afternoon at 1.30 and 3.52. We have a number of appointments to consider, and then we will do Senate Bill 159, followed by House Bill 1011. Senator Simpson. Thank you, Mr. President. Request a moment of personal privilege. Granted. Colleagues, just offer up an opportunity this weekend if you want to get out of the hustle and bustle of the Front Range. Uh, in the San Luis Valley is uh, an annual tradition, the Monta Vista Sand Hill Crane Festival. It's a wonderful opportunity. It's not building cranes. It, uh, it is sand hill cranes. Um, and I uh, refute the position that they taste like chicken. But anyway. It's a wonderful experience in the San Luis Valley. Come enjoy. Senator Bridges. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I don't know when it became custom to announce things that are in the calendar, but uh, because we do that, uh, appropriations will be meeting according to what is in the calendar. You're welcome. Senator Coleman. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, members of the Senate State Veteran and Military Affairs Committee will be meeting at 1.30 uh, today to discuss members of the Colorado Civil Rights Commission. We'll see you there. <coughs> members, the following senators are appointed as members of the first conference committee on Senate Bill 28. Senator Gonzalez is the chair. Henriksen and Pelton are as members. Further announcements? Majority Leader Moreno. Thank you, Mr. President. Seeing no further announcements, I move that the Senate recess until 12 p.m. today. Colleagues, you do not need to return. We're simply reading bills across the desk. You have heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed, no. The ayes have it. The Senate will recess until 12 noon today. <laughs>